Hi, I'm Doug Farley. I'm the director at the Cobblestone Museum. We're working on an episode of History at Home today. And I think today's is going to be one of the most interesting that we've produced to date. And uh, probably uh, will bring a, a smile to your face. With me is Denise Bedard, and she has a very interesting collection in her home. She'll tell us about how it all got started and what's, what, uh, where she is with this collecting today. Uh, and her family has been helping with her with this, so it's really grown out of their uh, predilection to give her these objects. So we'll let Denise tell you more about her chicken foot collection. That was chicken foot collection. <laughs> Go ahead, Denise. Hi, Doug. Actually, I have to start with a disclaimer. I'm not really sure if this is a chicken foot or another type of fowl, but we've always referred to it as a chicken foot, but I'm not an expert on it. So if there's any poultry farmers out there or an ornithologist, you know, that could tell us exactly what fowl this is, I'd appreciate it. But for now, we'll go with chicken foot just because that's all I know at the time. <laughs> um, the, my collection started about 35 years ago. At that time, we lived on South Main Street in Holly and we had a Victorian house. My mother came over one day all excited. She had found me the perfect gift, you know, for my Victorian house. And she pulled out what she had found at the yard sale, this, my very first chicken foot. And it's a shell and I'm assuming possibly an ashtray, though Kevin and I both never smoked, so it wasn't really made a lot of sense to have that, but she assured me that she knew it was Victorian and that I should have it. Well. I had to be graceful, and so I said, oh, thanks, Mom, just what I always wanted. And I put it up on the mantelpiece and on my fireplace and thought, well, I've got an unusual gift. Well, about two months later, who appears again but my mother, and she was at another yard sale in Clarkson, and hell, she found another one. You know, a little bit different in size, but still had the chicken feet on it. And so now, all of a sudden, I had two Victorian chicken feet for my collection. So they both went on the mantle. Well, after that, my sisters thought it was quite funny. And so they started a hunt for chicken feet also. Well, it's very hard to find these, as we found out. They're very rare. My sister at that time lived in Michigan and she went to lots of estate sales there. Never found chicken feet. You know, we go to all these different um, antique shops and ask about chicken feet and they were like, really didn't know what we were talking about. But slowly the collection grew for about the next four or five years. And I ended up with maybe six or seven different ones that also went on my mantle of my fireplace. And you know, and I kind of then got to appreciate them more because I realized they were rare and probably quite val valuable at just something no one else had ever thought to collect before. Well, so we kept looking for her. Mom found one in Georgia, which we were all excited about when she came back from Florida. And so the collection was slowly growing. Well, then eBay became popular. And I put on, in the search engine, chicken feet. And lo and behold, occasionally one would appear. Well, whenever one appeared, I had to purchase it. And so for the next 30 some odd years, I started really collecting chicken feet. And the collection has grown now to here, to the point where my family thought that maybe I should stop, that it was getting to be a little ridiculous that I was buying all these chicken feet. And so I filled up the rack and I said, no more chicken feet. I'm not buying anymore from now on. And so my collection has stopped at this point. Though I do occasionally still look on eBay to see if there's any out there. And there's one right now on eBay that looks just like this one and it's going for $125. And I knew these were very valuable from the beginning. The only problem is it's been on eBay now for nine months and nobody's purchased this. So possibly the value isn't really at $125. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to look at all of the different types of chicken feet. What's I can show you is, this one, which is a shell and the ashtray. Can you show us a close, close up of the feet? Oh, the feet? Yes. Okay. Can you see them? There, there's four of them. Mm -hmm. And on some of these, there is a script. And I think these were souvenirs from different gift shops that, that people used to purchase when they went to the beach and that. I have 
ink wells here. I have two ink wells, and one of them is from Bucket Lane. Is that what it was? Bucket Lane, Ohio. Buckeye. Buckeye Lake. Lake, Ohio. So wherever Buckeye Lake is, is where this one came from. And this one is an ink well. So you can put ink in there and just have that on your desk, which is very attractive, I would think. I actually have two of them. This one, the script is gone, so I'm not really sure where this ink well came from. But again, wouldn't you like that on your desk at the cobblestone? Oh, yes. <laughs> and then I have these that are chicken feet, a little larger chicken foot. So this is definitely probably a different type of fowl. And then these had glass, um, glass, I lost a word. <laughs> Glass in between. And I've got one. Yeah, and this one is actually a wooden piece in oh, between. Wooden. Yes, the wooden. Yeah, and it mm -hmm. has a little full look to it so that with paint so it looks like it's mahogany. Are the chicken feet themselves wood or are they metal casting? Cast iron. Cast iron. That's a very important part that I'll get to in a little while. They're cast iron the feet are and the top that holds the candle is also cast iron. We have let's see just some very simple ones down here that don't have the glass in between, mm -hmm. but they're very decorative with the cast iron in that. You see a similarity between all the feet? Do they all look like they're probably a, a, from one casting? Well, for the most part, there's some that are a little smaller and some that are a little bit larger. Okay. This here is a match holder. It's made out of wood that you can put matches in. Well, at least that's what I'm assuming at this point. It might be toothpicks. You know, I'm not an expert on what you put in there, but I put some matches in just to make it look like it had a use. And what else? Up here. Oh, these. Now these are very valuable. These have actually an embossing around the glass on them. And I've got one in pink, green, yellow, and blue. So those are quite precious there. And then up here, there are some that have a taller cylinder in between. So it's a, again, a little bit different. So they are worth collecting. So if you, what you had asked about what they were made of, they're made out of cast iron. And that's one thing you have to be really careful about that I'll share with you now, because I know there'll be some people out there that'll go, hmm, this might be an interesting collection to start. And since I'm not collecting anymore, I feel free to get, show, show a few pointers. My sister, in, when she lived in Michigan, found these here, there's two of them. She was all excited that she had found some chicken feet for me, which of course I would be excited about also. But her husband, who is a metallologist, said, Metallurgist. Metallurgist. <laughs> <laughs> um, said, no, these are not authentic chicken feet because they're not made out of cast iron, zinc. So be very careful. He took a magnet to it to know that it was zinc and not cast iron. So if you're purchasing some, make sure they're cast iron because for some reason, some company decided to reproduce these, you know, in this market. Hard to believe you could get involved with uh, chicken feet knockoffs. I know, but isn't it awful that they would do that? I at least know that all of mine are authentic, except for those two in the bottom, but you could easily get tricked if you're out there, so be very careful about that. For sure. Now, I, since I have this beautiful collection, I did have a dilemma, and I still have the dilemma, unfortunately, about who's going to take my collection once I pass. Well, I have two children, and I asked both of them, you know, I could divide it in half, and they both could have one, and they both said, mm, maybe not. Uh, we'll pass on that. So, all of a sudden, I was in a dilemma again. Well, luckily, my son has four children. So I have four grandchildren. And my oldest, Beckett, when he was little, he loved my chicken feet. And he was over here constantly pulling them out and playing with them. So finally, I know who's going to get this collection. But then when he reached about two to two and a half, he lost interest in it. Oh and the same thing happened with Ella and with Liliana. They all loved it when they were babies. And then when they got to be about two or three, they said, no mom, no grandma, I don't want those chicken feet. So I've got one hope left and that is my grandson who's one years old now, Bowden. 
he again just like the other three love them he's over here constantly pulling them out looking at them moving them all over the place and i really have to keep his love for these chicken feet so i'll have an air for them so i got thinking why on earth when the children got to be about two and a half or three did they stop liking my chicken feet and i can't have this happen to bowden well, then i came to me a possible reason I have this book that I love to read to the kids. It's called Bony Legs. And I don't know if you've ever read it before, but it's really great. And you might want to get a copy of it yourself. It's by Joanna Cole. And so it's, you know, a lovely story about this woman who has the name of Bony Legs. And she lives in a house that stands on chicken feet. Can you believe it? There they are. Right. And she also has a bathtub that has chicken feet, not just a clawfoot bathtub, but actually a chicken foot bathtub. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to spoil the story for you, and that's I don't want to go into too much depth with it so that you can read it yourself. But there is a little problem. Bony legs enjoys eating children. Oh. And I think possibly the children are afraid of my chicken feet now because of that, because they think I know bony legs and that she gave me the chicken feet. And so they want nothing to do with the chicken feet. So I'm going to put this on my bookshelf and Bowden is never going to hear this story because I do not want him to become afraid since the kids kind of think Bony Lakes lives out in my woods. Oh, I don't know how they got that idea. But, <laughs> but it does work sometimes when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And you said, well, I could go get Bony Lakes for you. And so then they stop right away. But that's all right. I'll find a different method of discipline for Bowden. And so we'll keep this on the bookshelf. So that's what I'm going to do. So now I've got an ear for my collection. But now for people out there that want to be collectors, there's a couple things I have to warn you about. That besides getting gifts like these from your sisters and your parents, which I really love, you do get some other gifts sometimes. Excuse me for a minute. Like this chicken foot. Now it's rubber and I don't know, they thought it was hilarious when I unwrapped it for a birthday gift, but I'm really not sure what I'm supposed to do with my chicken foot. I also received this beautiful brooch that is a chicken foot, which I wear when I look for chicken feet, but besides that, it's kind of a morbid thing to have on you, but I put it on for today. I also have received a chicken with chicken feet. Isn't that lovely? Yes. So beware, you are going to get other things, but just be gracious about it and go, oh, how nice of you to give that to me and accept it. You know, they just don't appreciate the true love of chicken feet. So I'm going to let Erin for a second show you the collection so you can get a total good idea of just all the specialties of each one of them. Okay. And then I'll show you my last gift that I received just recently. Also, isn't this wonderful for COVID-19? It's your COVID-19 mask, yes. Yes, and the chicken. Isn't that wonderful? Again, I was very gracious when I received it. I said, oh, thank you. Yeah. I'll wear that often. But, I think you better so, stay back more than six feet, though, with that mask on. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about people. <laughs> right away. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll spread out for sure. <laughs> that is my collection for you. Denise, guys. have you ever heard anything about what the, the, why the Victorians were using chicken feet in their, uh, their home decorations? No, but I have known that witchcraft sometimes is involved with chicken feet. So, you know, in fact, in the 90s, they came out in a reproduction of a chicken foot with a little devil head on top of it. 
you know, and so, but don't buy those. But anyways, there is some with magic and, you know, witchcraft, but these definitely were never involved in Let's magic. Let's hope that they were collecting them to ward off that magic. That, uh, so. that possibly could be it. Yes, and that's why they're here. So I guess I'm nice and safe because I have a lot of them to ward off. Yes, for sure. Well, thank you, Denise. This is uh, just been a wonderful experience for me. I hope our listeners and viewers are going to be <laughs> as interested. And uh, if someone wants to shoot me a message or whatever, I'll be sure to send it along, Denise, to Denise. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a great job today on History at Home. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>